Welcome to Makers International, a podcast of makers, connecting with makers from all around the world. Here's your hosts, Jamie Page, Chris Cute, and now, Richard Morley. Hello, 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 hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good times, whatever time it is, or wherever you're listening. Join with me, as always, Mr. Chris Cute. How you doing? And Mr. Jamie Page. How you doing? But also, kind of, kind of almost honorary mentions joining us this evening, because joining us live, uh, we've got Damo as uh, Ujiga Pivi, Steve Harneal, Harneal Media, Dave McLennan, Steve Coombs, uh, Dale at Maple Tree Studios, Andy from AH Bespoke, um, I think I saw Anna, yes I did, Anna from Anna B's Workshop, just everyone saying hi in the, in the chat, so massive warm welcome to all of those folks that are joining us live, if you're not joining us live and you're listening at some kind of futuristic time, um, hopefully we're all still alive and the planet's still spinning, who knows at the moment, it's all getting a bit weird, but as always... Something else that's pretty weird, but not completely. Um, our show this evening, well, yeah, Jamie. probably will be a bit weird, but <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, well, and Jamie as well. Yes, sorry, Jamie. Mm. <laughs> well, there's, there's Living the dream. Going on. <laughs> Living the dream. What boy. I was actually going to, what I was actually going to get to though, which is kind of not weird, but it's weird that we have them, is our sponsors, because uh, obviously tonight's show is brought to you in part <laughs> by our good friends. Yorkshire Grip, we'll turn this brace of paste. Our good friend Chad at Man Crafting, Pam from Highland Boxes, and he's in the chat live. So a big special thank you to Steve at Harnil Media. He sorts out all the background stuff with the website and la, 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 all that kind of stuff. Sorry, Jamie. No more credit for you on that one. Um, and I but take you... all the credit. Yeah. I think you've used up all your credit for the, for the website, actually, Jamie. But um, if you want to find out what we were talking about with the website, then head on over there makersinternationalpodcast.com forward slash sponsors and there's all sorts of other things over there and I'm going to steal a bit of Jamie's page and go if you go makersinternationalpodcast.com forward roll stickers you can get 15% off your stickers and hopefully with a bit of luck that saved us from the little light lyric down the further on in the podcast <laughs> I doubt uh-huh. it well, I thought he was going to go that's Richard done now. I feel like I've just said it <laughs> I feel like I'm just going to hit a sugar crash now I'm just going Ugh. Is that it? Can we get sleep? Right. I'm just I, saying, you do realize we're, we're never actually going to have paid sponsors for this. I mean, we're never making any money off of what we're doing. It's I, just. Do you know what? I reckon if we paid a couple of sponsors, we might, if we could club together enough, we could probably <laughs> pay for a sponsor. <laughs> if we paid for them, yeah. That's kind of <laughs> not the way it's. Okay, whatever. Anyway. <clears throat> it's so, a, how, we're still on this how, learning curve. How have you guys been doing this? Because we haven't, in the last three weeks, it's been kind of like this. We haven't really chatted very much. So, how have you, how have you guys been doing? I shaved. Um, I noticed. I had a close shave, not an actual shave, um, but I, I got a boo boo in the workshop. Nothing, Aww. nothing drastic. It, it literally was just like a tiny little boo boo. And if anyone, everyone watching, um, excuse my grubby mitts, but can you see right at the end of my finger? Oh, hang on, uh, there, right at the top. Can you see it? Yeah, it looks like oh, you got a, a, a nail, a nail stuck into it or something. I really hey, had no way. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it felt like a red hot poker being driven in by a freight train it went and it was ah oh, and all all it was a splinter just a little splinter, that's but it why i wear went. gloves in my workshop i mean people don't understand it just was this i wasn't even woodworking or doing anything at the time i literally just went to pick something up and i just knocked my hand and instead then normally like splinters will go in at really acute angles and kind of go along the Whatever. This didn't. This literally. This literally went in 180 degrees. Like, it's, imagine something coming out of the end of your finger. It mm-hmm. literally went in, just like that, and it felt like it just. Oh, I don't and, know, you know what it was. And they hurt. That they hurt for just about as long as paper cuts hurt. Because yeah, you know, they probably a paper cut. That I mean, it's a little small itty bitty thing, but those darn things really hurt, and they'd keep hurting for like hours after you do it it's like well, chill out. It's all, like, all on, i can do it, is i can imagine richard dancing around his workshop on his tiptoes going <laughs> yeah pretty pretty much what happened but that, whatever it was that was in there i don't think actually it, it might not have been a splinter wood it might have been like a bit of swarf or metal or something because right. it, it whatever it was broke off and wedged like this the bottom half of it stayed in my finger and i literally had to kind of without getting too kind of gross kind of dig it dig around and get a bit out and yeah it was just 
Oh, just mm, hurts yeah. just thinking about it now. Actually, so that I think, was me. I think I think my hands are actually healing themselves. I mean, because due to my you know mishap that happened, I mean, I haven't been out in the shop and and I haven't I'm, I haven't cut my hands in quite some time, and I think they're freaking out. Like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> are, you, are you gonna have all like? girly office hands i might grow a six well, finger now i mean i don't know i mean you know, yeah, anyway so yeah I, all that, all that moisturizer you've been putting on for the last few weeks doing <laughs> the dish. i don't put moisturizer on my hands but okay maybe i should but I'd still i don't yeah oil of olay here i come mm. <laughs> Get hands that do dishes Oh, Jamie, what have you been up to, brother? <laughs> Please, let's move on. Not, not a lot to answer. I've, I've been doing a bit of, uh, I've been doing a bit of, or oh, helping my nephew do some uh, homework. Let's say, um, whether it's real or fake homework, either way, I've been spending some time in my workshop with my nephew, which has been pretty good. He's done some nice. sculpture work. He's been, he's done some wood turning. It's been pretty fun. So, and obviously, I've been doing my own videos as well. So, yeah, it's been been a good time. How's it feel being a teacher of sorts? Not bad, not bad. No, it's pretty especially rewarding. especially when especially when their work has probably come out half as well, double as good as mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, teaching people how to do things is a pretty rewarding thing. Um, yeah, he, he he picked it up really really fast. I mean, I've done a video with uh, my nephew before on wood turning. But the fact that he done scroll sawing for the first time and he took to it like a duck to water, just like I did. So maybe well, he's got a new call in as well. Bear in I, mind, he's he, he, he suffers with autism as well. And that, that so, is, sorry, what what did you say he was calling it? He took to it to a duck to water. Oh, I I thought you said he called it something, and then I was expecting like this this, this torrent of abuse. But uh, I think I drifted off a little bit there. Sorry. Oh, all right, fair enough. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can tell you, I can, the most rewarding thing I ever taught was when I taught my son how to mow the lawn. And like, <laughs> here, son, this is how you do it. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> is that before they had motors? No, yeah, no, I no. He actually had a no. It was easy for him. I mean, it wasn't so easy when I was his age, but it, it still was a good goodbye. Like, you see how it worked? Oh yeah, Dad, I got this. Okay, great. See you later. <laughs> I, I got taught. I got taught to do it with scissors. I just oh. imagine like you see, seeing a like a, a teenager mowing the lawn for the first time. I've, I've got this. And somehow it always when they're finished, it always looks like there's been like a football match with twenty two <laughs> snails. <laughs> just like, like, going in a straight line. No, this is what it's so much more fun. And and no and no flower beds. But, <laughs> yeah. but, yeah, but you know what? I don't, I don't. I don't care because I didn't have to do it. That's fine, son. However you want to go at this, you just go right ahead. Thank you. I'll, I'll I, be, I remember. I'll, back. Be in, I'll be inside having a having a cold one. Let me know when you're in. <laughs> I think. I think it must have been about ninety seven, ninety eight, maybe. Mm -hmm. I was. I was going out with this girl who lived uh, in Haverhill, which is about twenty miles away from where I I grew up, and. Um, uh, her her mum and dad had bought this old, it's like a 15th century farmhouse on the side, of, on the, the edge of the town. Cool. And it came with four, eight, four acres of land, it's saying. It was, it was, you know, it was, basically it was a derelict shell when they bought it in the mid 80s and they're the, just doing it up for years and years and years. Fixer up. Enormous, yeah. That was a total fixer up. Um, there, you, there, were, there were rooms that were just basically storerooms boxes of stuff belongings and the plaster was just hanging off the walls by the lards <laughs> and you could kind of see through into another room which was also yeah it was, it was that bad yeah um, i know i hear you it's like straight out of a hitchcock film kind of a place anyway <laughs> for four acres of land and they had this in just grass and like one of those enormous sit on mowers well we we don't have sit on mowers in the uk that like the biggest thing is about Maybe 18 inches wide, it's a push job, so it's like 17, 18 year old kids. Like, yeah, I'll do the lawn for you. Yeah, it's no worries. I'd, I'd be, be more than happy to help. I was like, hey, on this like, little it's like, <laughs> driving around like well, it's Lucky like Gilmore, yeah, yeah it's go kart time. Uh <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh man, anyway, yeah. um, we've got a bunch of we have 
several questions this evening, um, three of which were happily provided by our main questioner, uh, Mr. Andy Pugh. And then we have one a from, Pew from Andy Pugh. Yeah, we have a, a question from do that one. We have a question from Chris Murray too that we sh that we need to address. And if there's Oh, excuse me, I had to burp. If there are any questions from anybody out in the chat, that was rude. I know, and I apologize. But um, if there was, uh, if anybody else has questions out in the chat, then feel free to ask them, and we'll hold Jamie responsible for collecting them. Um, but do you guys want to get into? You guys want, want to get into this, or do you have more things that you want to just kind of ramble off about? But I mean, kind of the 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 starting off the topicy kind of stuff to ramble on about is pretty much as as always. How we kind of come up with topics. I mean, I, I've been kicking around in the workshop the last week, um, just making do. I don't know if you've been, have you, have you guys been watching the um, tool cabinet build that I've been doing? I did watch. You know, uh, the, you know, I think I watched one of them. Yeah, and then you fell asleep, and it all got very, very dull. No, no, like I did. Two, no, two hours. Two hours. I didn't. I didn't fall asleep. I, I, actually, got, I, I, I got halfway I, through I, and put the rest in a watch later list. I did. <laughs> I did watch your first live, Richard. That was the uh, bazillion, and, um, and, you, and, you, yeah, and you know that because I was a smart ass throughout the entire thing. But whatever, that's fine. That's fine. That's no worries. Um, well, I, if for anyone that hasn't or doesn't have a clue what we're talking about, I basically it was just tidying up and just moving scrap from one place to another, and I, I just looked at this old tall wall. I suppose you could call it. It's basically two bits of or well, three bits of four by two that framed out a piece of plywood I had at the time. This is going back seven years and it was only a temporary thing. And um, I just started nailing bits of wood and screws into it to hold various tools. And it sort of changed a bit. You know how these temporary things just last for years and they're never temporary. I thought what I'd really, I'd love to make like a really nice tool cabinet, like a opening out E right. hanging and organized because it would make actually loads more room. That was kind of the, the point of it. It'd look a bit nicer, but also when I've got the lathe out, I can close the doors up and I don't have to hoover down all the tools from all the chips and, sand and sawdust and all the rest of it. I just close the doors on it and keep it all tidy. So I started using up a load of scraps. And um, I thought, well, I'm not doing anything else. I'll put the old live stream on and do that. And it's just been evolving. But as a, as a result of that, I kind of said, I can't go out anywhere and and. Yeah, I'd love to go and get some nice veneered MDF to make some panels up. I've just got these tatty old bits of MDF. I'll right. just, yeah, you know, I'll just put it on there. It'll be fine. I'll just use up all the scraps and all the rest of it. But it's meant I've been forced to kind of do things that I hadn't done for ages. Oh yeah, so, does that make sense? Oh yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I had, to, I had to order the piano hinges because I physically didn't have any hinges kicking around. But everything else has just been scrap. So I've been um veneering bits of mdf with bits of oak to make it try and try and make it a little bit nice i was like oh do you know what? i'd forgotten i've got this vacuum pump and a bag and I'll, i i forgot i've got these veneers i could put the two together and just that be doing all make it a bit nicer rather than just more bits of mdf and more bits of scrap and just right. kind of tied it up a bit and i just fell down this rabbit hole just got completely lost with overly complicated oh but if i could veneer those and then i could, cut, I could, I could edge band that and i could put these little shelves up and then i could just like drill counterboard holes but i would put this mdf so i'll have to i'll have to inlay some solid bits of wood in there so i can't and it just went on and in the end i was like well is this ever going to end this is like the, the rabbit hole of rabbit holes that just and have, have you ever done that oh uh, yeah <laughs> i did i did that when i first got my lathe and then Somebody says, Chris, you ought to try making pens. And I'm telling you, that's a deep friggin' rabbit hole. Um, and I got about halfway down and then was managed to pull my way out of it. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I have. Because then you end up, like you said, overcomplicating things because you're so into it. And it's like, then when you know when you stand back and come up the next day, you go, that's totally absurd. Why, 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 why would I do that? <laughs> it's, like, but it's, it's cool. But it's a cool like, idea, but yeah, I don't need that. <laughs> But it's it's not just the overcomplicating it. It's almost out of necessity. Like if right. I said, if I, if I could have ordered just a, like a, a a single eight by four sheet of oak veneered MDF, I could have just cut it up and put it all together, and that'd have been all the things I needed. And you'd be fine. Because right. I've got like because I've got like little little scrappy bits and like cobbling around all that. Yeah, oh, but... I can use that bit for that, and you just sort of 
cob everything takes a lot longer because now I've got a like yeah, individual because, twenty little pieces. But because you had to get creative, you, you go over that hill. <laughs> it's like yeah, okay, here we go. <laughs> and it just it's like a little tumble down the other side, isn't it? Like, oh, all stuff get out of control. <laughs> I, I just start raining myself back. I, do you know what? I won't do that. I won't do that. I'll just keep it. Oh. So, all right, let's start. Uh, have you been? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, I'll tell, I mean, I'll, tell you one, been... I'll tell you one thing I've kind of discovered is after I've um, finished a project and I've uh, normally I'd use maybe one or even three quarters of a trash bag to fill up all of the sawdust and the, the sawdust that's gone all over the place and then the other bits and paper towels and all that sort of stuff that goes into a, a, a trash bag. Well, more and more recently, like I've done a big, big clear up of my workshop not so long ago. But more recently, after I've, after I've done a project, like I just said, and I've cleaned up all of the stuff that I've done from turning, for some unknown reason, I always end up with either two or three trash bags full of rubbish because I go and open up a, a, a cabinet or something like that and all of a sudden think, oh, I completely forgot that. Well, I don't need that no more. And that could just go in the bin. And, I, and I'm like, why am I throwing all this stuff away? So, I mean, it's... I mean, a lot of stuff was damaged or whatever, but I'm finding stuff, and I'm like, why have I still got this? <laughs> you know? Scroll, why have I still got a scroll site? So never use that. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we... Before, out, uh, <laughs> before we answer all the questions before they're asked, let's get to some of them. Um, uh, Andy, he has three questions today. He says that the obvious first question is, what tool, and Richard already kind of answered this on his part, but anyway, uh, um, what tool or material have you found since lockdown that you had thought lost? Okay, that's maybe a little different. Have you found anything that you have, and I guess I'm, I'm going to interpret this, Andy, to mean, you know, maybe you found something that you forgot you had, or... Maybe you found something that you thought was lost and you just went, oh, my God, that's where that, you know, that nine millimeter socket wrench thing goes <laughs> or whatever. So, I mean. so I've, I've got something I found and I completely forgot that I had. Um, and that was actually a hole cutting set. Which is funny because I haven't even got a drill press anymore or pillar drill, whatever you want to call it. What, what if you, you, you've got a pillar drill. Is, you had you just free. Drill? Yeah, it all seized up on me. It seized up real, real bad. So the motor just kind of said, so "Yeah." Hmm. So I was like, "Yeah, I'm not. I don't, I'm not going to try messing around with that." So I'll just let the uh, um, people take it. Well, you know, because oh, right, okay. when you get another one, you can forget that you had that again, and it'll be another nice yeah. discovery. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I actually put it in the drawer this time as opposed to the uh, the, <laughs> the, the box that my bandsaw sitting on. <laughs> Wayne the Bigfoot oh, Woodcraft says he found the floor again in his workshop, but then he lost it. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, been there. Uh, totally understand that. Um, I actually haven't found anything. Um, just because of the, the lack of time I've actually been able to be out in my shop. So I, I, I don't have a suitable answer for that, Andy. I'm sorry. You can call me a failure later if you'd like. I, I've sort of been doing the opposite of finding things I thought. I can't think of anything that I've found, re-found that I thought lost. Um, I, I, I dug out the, the vacuum pump and the bag uh, to do the veneering because I basically I pulled out a load of veneers. I was like, oh, yes, oh, I could do... And then some scraps of, right, I'll do that. Um, but because of the way my workbench is and the tool wall was, it was literally, it was just like sat on the back, almost like a splashback, just straight up the wall. Right. Um, whereas now it's got doors on it. I sort of, I thought oh, I've got to raise it up a little bit to clear like odds and ends. And I knew it was likely to be not ideal because obviously I've got glass walls behind it. So I can't just lift it up and, put it mm. on the wall because that's glass um so i'm a, i've got a little bit of um limitations per se for hanging it it's got to be <clears throat> can't be hung 
it's got to be supported and just kind of held at the back. So I just literally raised it up on the edge of a four by two, or two by four, Chris. Um, so I've got about two inches of clearance between the top of my workbench and because I'm constantly opening the doors and like, does that fit? And then closing the door and then moving something out. So it's a bit of, because I'm working on the workbench to kind of on a project to clear the workbench, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. It's chaos. So I put something down, then I have to move it because I want to open the door and it'll roll or it'll, it'll roll underneath something and I'll lose it. And do you know when you put the pencil down and you pick it up again and it's not there? Like in a second, <laughs> I've been doing that with everything. Like, you don't where's know. My it's literally it, bolted it, to the bench. How can and, it be lost? And people who don't make things just don't understand this, but that seriously happens. It's like, I mean, it in my shop, it happens all the time. I use the pencil for what I need and I put it down. I go finish doing whatever I was doing with this and I go to pick the pencil back up and it's gone. It's, it's, it's like, literally, it's not just. <laughs> it's not just pencils. I, I kid you not. It's not just pencils. I, I could understand because you do it all the time with pencils. But a hand plane. How do you lose a number four and a half hand plane? Like eight square feet of real estate that's literally right in front of you. Like, yeah, I mean, and, 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 and honestly, yeah. it's because our mind is thinking about something totally else, and we pick the thing up and we actually move it and forget that we did it. But it, it, that is so aggravating, Richard. I can so relate to that. Um, Oh my god! It's yeah, like you know, it slows things down. Uh, well, it slows okay. the progress, but then when you find it, you go, "Oh yeah, now I remember I did that." And then, it, then you start getting pissed off at yourself, and it's just not a good thing. Uh, yeah, anyway. I couldn't find the knockout bar to my lathe the other day and realized it was still in the lathe. <laughs> just kind of, does, it, does it make that little rattly noise? That's <laughs> like, oh no, no, I, I didn't <laughs> turn the lathe on afterwards. It because my my headstock uh, um, spins round. So, so I had it in the headstock from when I uh, spun the headstock round. So when I went right. to turn it back round, that was when I was like, oh, it's not moving. Ah, uh, I know why. Well, Jamie, because only because you wear them too, and I didn't start wearing them until like five years ago. But how many times have you walked around looking for your glasses only to realize <laughs> they're right here? <laughs> you know, well, I, 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 have to, now, I have to wear them constantly because I'm blind in my left eye. But oh. I never used to wear them. I went through my whole senior uh, school years without wearing glasses. I well, I it's happened to me a couple times. I'm not going to exaggerate things. I'm just going to be honest and say it has happened to me more than once. That I'll go, where the hell are my glasses? And I go, oh, they're on your face, you dummy. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, second I've, question. I've, I've lost count of times I've walked into a room and forgot why I wanted to go in there, and then wet myself. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wrong room. Oops. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Mum. I'll, I'll mop the floor when I get back. <laughs> oh crap. Oops. That this, I mean this, that, this is that a butcher shop, sir. Yeah, this wasn't that wasn't meant to be a little <laughs> remark. Anyway, um, all right, I need a drink. Hold on. <laughs> oh, all right. Next question would be. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to survive that last one. Anyway, um, <laughs> Wayne, what... <laughs> Wayne says, "How are people?" Oh, sorry, I've got I've got a button with this one, Chris. I do apologise. Wayne, ahead. the Bigfoot Woodcraft says, "How are people getting getting by with um, pencils now that IKEA's closed because of lockdown?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I Easy, go to the Argos. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you know what? A screw fix. Get a screw fix. I, I swear to you, if I ever have to move to a new home, I'm going to find so many pencils and probably several tape measures. The, the, <laughs> when I, when I have to rip my shop apart and move it. Anyway, um, oh, God, good point, Wayne. Um, all right. The second question would be what have you made? During this, uh, you know, stay in lockdown, sort of whatever you want to call it, period, uh, that you might not have if it hadn't happened. So, have you, I guess he's asking, have you explored new fields or green acres or however you want to put that? I, well, I didn't really make it, I, I sort of gave a bit of direction, but cat and mini noodle wanted to make a bee hotel 
Oh, so, cool. Uh, the, the, one, the one with the little yeah. pegs in it that on the inside? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Paint and like roundy, holy. Well, those are kind so of fun to make. I, I mean, they're not hard, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, not, not particularly difficult. Um, I I did manage to knacker a drill bit though because I tried to go through end grain cherry with a blunt auger bit where the snail was completely mm. useless. So it yeah. just went in about an eighth of an inch and burn but that yeah that was, that was a, a learning experience um but yeah that i wouldn't there's no way i'd have done that otherwise um because just why why would i um yeah, i'm not an innkeeper so i mean i you know the bees around my place you know what sorry dudes you're on your own um <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not putting in the time <laughs> it's like um uh maybe i should but you know i haven't what about you jamie uh, not personally, but I also gave a, a little bit of direction to a uh, cat. Um, I sent her a video of someone knitting with noodles. So I don't know if she actually did that. You mean like real so like noodle? Sp- n- n- yeah, noodle like knitting. Noodles. Like spaghetti noodles? Well, like egg, yeah, like egg noodles. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. So, the demo noodles, say- noodle. <laughs> Knitting the bloody I, I noodles, noodle. I, I had no, I'm, no, I'm ignoring it. I'm just going to ignore you, Jamie. Um, Damo in the in the chat was saying he built some some raised garden beds. I've seen a lot of people making. I've seen, I think it's that time I, of year. I think um, I saw Mike yeah. Fulton. He, Mike Fulton put out a video about a raised garden bed that he just did too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, um, that harkens back to the ones I made for my wife. Out of pine, which are now growing weeds, because I knew they were going to last that long, which is why I made them out of pine. Um, the uh, <laughs> the but they're well, they're still out there anyway. The flaming Turner says uh, his uh, his mine is doing uh, pyro on watercolor paper. It's, it's, it's pretty shocking that it actually works. And you know what, dude? Oh, I that, wouldn't have expected that to work. I wouldn't have expected that to work either. But hey, you know what? Hmm. Uh, I know Andy Hill done a uh, a swing for his boy. Um, yeah, I saw that, that. I think there's so many people who, because there's this, there's sort of family time and making time is kind of morphing, in a way, uh, which is uh, a side effect of. Well, I don't know if side effects the right word, but a, a scenario which I wouldn't have thought would happen, like. I, I'm stuck here with cat, and I mean that in the nicest. I don't mean stuck, but right. I'm I'm <laughs> choosing my digging. words carefully. Um, <laughs> no, but I'm, 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 we're we're here, you know, confined by legislation. Um, I want to want to be a hotel. I can't get out of it. Okay, um, but yeah, uh, Andy's made a a swing for his nipper. That, that family time, mm-hmm. bringing the two together. Um, Damo and, and Mike Fulton doing, I don't know if that's a, a family kind of related thing or just a house related thing or, or not, but it's kind of cool. Well, it was, it was more of an appeasement thing on my part when I did it. Um, <laughs> I was totally with me. Yeah. hundred percent. But don't tell, don't tell her that I said that. Um, I never said that. We'll edit that out. Well, like what have I made? Um, well, I've made a lot of people angry. Um, I think, <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think I've made. I, I think I've it. made. A, I think I've made a few people laugh. Um, I made dinner, but I, you know, I make dinner anyway. Oh, I made a mess that I ordinarily probably wouldn't have. But you know, out outside of that, Andy, I, I'm just I'm really losing today, so I, I apologize. <laughs> um, has, has anyone been doing any baking? Kind of making during I made, all this. I, I made. Well, I don't know if you can call it baking because it's so simple. I made brownies the other day. You know, just little brownies. Yeah, exactly. Little brownies. I, I didn't make these. And uh, my wife ate all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but you I, make you know, them, I'll eat them. But I, I, you know, hey, I, you know, I, I made that. I, I've done that. I actually have some cake mix that I was thinking about, 
but I'm not a big I'm not a big baker, Richard. But I'm, but I mean, I've got it, so I'll probably give it a go in the next week or two. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't necessarily have to be baking like the treats and cakes and things like that, but just um, well, yeah, actually, I did mean that. Yeah, <laughs> my cat's been doing loads of awesome baking. That's a just the best thing I've been. That's your, that's your sweet tooth talking. You know what? And the only thing that I do enjoy baking, and I haven't done it in a long time, and now that you made me think about it, I want to do it again, is I like baking bread. Because there's nothing better than hot bread out of an oven. Oh, uh, I mean, the next day, it, it, it can go, you know, kiss off. But, I mean, the day that it comes out, it's like, oh, oh nothing better. Fresh bread. There's a there's a, a shop at the, the top of Cat Street, um, and they they get in fairly fresh bread every morning, and you have to get up really quick to otherwise you end up with like nothing. Yeah, all exactly. the you, yeah. you know the supermarkets you get it all like processed and last three weeks. And oh, Jamie, Jamie's uh, that's Jamie drooling. He's disappeared off. He's gone to the um, <laughs> he's, he's straight off into the eating well, just We've just made him hungry. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he comes. Come back, Jamie. Come well, we back. can. I mean, I, we can. We can. Oh my! Hey, Wayne Bigfoot Woodcraft said he made a rhubarb strudel today. Dude, that's impressive. Peter, that Miller, is, I mean, I'm not. I am not a big rhubarb fan, if I'm honest. But that is. Make, that's. But making a strudel isn't always the easiest thing to do if you do it correctly. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, technically, that's quite a, um, a a big deal in in the in making cooking yeah. sort of terms, isn't it? And Chris, you know, father of Dagontel, said that Susie made an amazing cheesecake. Oh, and dude, you know what? I live, and you probably already know this, but I live like forty five minutes out of New York City. Um, and if you can find a better cheesecake than what you can find in New York City, I, I well, first of all, I'll, I'll bow down to you and tell you I'm not worthy to be able to, but I'll also kiss your rear end um, because, I mean, <laughs> they serve a cheesecake, and I'm telling you, it's like this. And oh my gosh. Now, HP spoke made mushroom soup. All right. I, I mean, I really can't oh. do just mushroom soup. I, I like mushrooms and soup, but not just mushrooms and mushroom soup. Um, but that's, hey, that's me. That doesn't matter. Um, Oh, loaf of fresh baked bread from Jim. Um, mm. yeah, fresh break, uh, fresh baked bread smells well nice as well. Awesome. Uh, oh. Welcome to the cooking podcast. Yeah, it's really. Nice. Mm. Well, n- see, now we're just everybody's just getting hungry. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's just looking at all these. I'll have some fresh bread with uh, slabbered on, on the butter with a rhubarb strudel. Yeah. Um, and then to finish off. Oh, you know, I mean, because oh. well, well, cooking is making, you know, it's like, and people it totally do, is. Do, do not discount that because, I mean, yes, we need it for survival, but um, it's still the uh, same. And thing. Andy Pugh said Baker's International. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? <laughs> we should we should start a new channel and then and then talk about yeah, and then show people how to make what we make, even though, you know, stickers. Our, Several percent of which you'll never want to do, but you know we can show you. <laughs> That's what we should do. <laughs> All right, let me Wait, see. Let's go. Let's international it. hashtag Team Strudel. <laughs> Before I start talking about making lasagna and get really, really hungry, let's move on. Um, <clears throat> oh shit! I just said that. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> Third question: What have you learned? Or practiced whilst being in this situation. Oh, and I'm, I, I'm, I take it Andy's asking that, meaning what have you learned or practiced that you might ordinarily not have? And I actually do have an answer for this one, Andy. So yeah, I'm not going to be a loser here. I don't think we'll find out. Um, drinking disinfectant stings your throat. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> so, I, somebody I, said, I, um, <laughs> uh, there I'm was much a, happier with the baking show than where that's going to friggin' lead me. So, let's, no. 
Jesus Christ, Jimmy. Oh, Some, somebody had sent a meme today about um, it was like um, something to do with Dettol or Domestus. Um, oh, I can't remember what it is now. If I can, I have to try and find it. It's going to do my head in. What have I? What have I learned? Learned? Don't learned or practiced? Memes. Or yeah. Uh, um, I, well, you need, I you have need learned to... I need an alarm clock. Genuinely, I don't know if anyone else is suffering this, um, because I haven't got like a fixed time to be up. You know, so there's no, you don't have to be up for the school run, or you don't have to be up for for work, or you don't have to be up to catch the bus, or you know, whatever it is, yeah. everyone in the morning has got like a, even if it's like their favourite TV show or breakfast, there's a time that you have to get up for. Do you know what I mean? It sort of morphed and got later and later and later. So what my, and this is really weird because I'm, I wouldn't consider myself a lazy person because right? I like to think I'm kind of always doing something, but the, the rather than the day getting shorter because I'm getting up later because I'm getting lazier, the, the whole day has kind of shifted. So oh. where it would start at maybe 6.30, it's gone to like 7 and then 7.30 and then 8 and 8.30. Do you know what I mean? And it's just what? got a bit what? like, it's like being 12 on summer holidays again. I mean, yeah. over the years, obviously that's happened to me because you guys know I keep UK time and not US time. Okay, and, I keep US time. And, and, and Jamie keeps US time. It's just, it's like your your clock just gradually moves. It's like when I was working in overnights. I was doing an overnight shift on the first radio station I worked for, and I worked from twelve o'clock at midnight to six in the morning. And then you get you get into that kind of lifestyle for about you know four weeks or so. And so, you know, I'm I'm getting off work at six a.m. and this is for me my nighttime. You know, it's like I now and so I've got. I go into like a 7-Eleven or a convenience store and everybody's buying coffee and there I am with a six pack of beer and people are looking at me with funny freaking looks and I'm just going, hey, I've got a different clock now. <laughs> I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, not the day. I wasn't retired then. It was just my alarm clock became very, very different. It was like, and you kind of gradually work into it. I mean, I was drinking coffee at 9 p.m. at night. You know, it's, you know, uh, yeah, it just happens, Richard. And that's kind of what happened yeah, to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd always find that on, um, on exercise. I don't know if Wayne actually, um, when the wood turner used to do this, you, you go away on exercise and time wasn't really important. Like it is in normal real right. world. Obviously, obviously like at this time, this happens. And at that time that happens is really important. But the fact that it's day or night is more important, right? Because you have like a you have a day routine and a night routine. <laughs> so you might be, and, and it's literally so, so. You might sleep in the day and work at night, which actually we used to do an awful lot of on exercise in the infantry because most of the stuff you do is at night. So consequently, you'd go to sleep when the sun was coming up. So when everyone's having their breakfast, you're scoffing a stew or something oh you want to stick like and steak and mashed potatoes right <laughs> exactly you want, to, you want to kind of go to bed with something hot in your belly and rather than that might be at like just as the sort of like nine o'clock in the morning you're having like stewing dumplings or something and it was just it kind of yeah. gets a bit weird and your your body kind of really yeah 24 hours on call is what that's what Wayne oh, yeah, would say. Yeah, exactly um, Wayne. Just, yeah a bit, a bit <sighs> kind of crazy so that, that's sort of it's that's kind of actually how it is at the moment um it's just day or night and things are just morphing and, and kind of getting weird in terms of well it's like because my wife day. my wife has been working at from from at home for like the last month and a half because her company god bless them uh shut down their offices a month and a half ago and just said you guys stay at home We'll do the internet thing. We'll do, you know, Zoom conferences, whatever it takes. But we want to make sure we take care of our employees. And But she's been really good about it because, you know, she will have a schedule the next day where she has an 8 a.m. Zoom meeting that she has to be on. So she's kind of been forced into it, whereas 
because I don't have those scheduled things anymore, I'm like what Wirch is talking about. I just don't, I don't have that plan. I might stay awake until three in the morning, or I might go to bed at nine o'clock, you know, in, in the evening. I mean, it just, I, it, goodbye. You know, the whole thing about, you know, keeping a stringent work, uh, you know, schedule. It's just, no, <laughs> it's gone. Bye-bye. Has been for years. Um, my answer to the question, though, getting back to that. What have you learned or practiced while speaking in, in the situation we're in? Um, Andy, I can honestly tell you, and this is the only credible answer I have to give today, quite honestly, um, is that because before my little mishap happened, I had sorted out all the scrap wood on, on my workbench, I have gone out there in the past week and grabbed like, you know, just little pieces, like maybe this big, this long, that are cut like this. And I've actually rediscovered my Dremel. And I was never good at using a Dremel. So I figured, you know what? If this is all I can do, then I'll do it. I brought, you know, and I brought the scrap. Actually, where is it? Never mind. Oh, oh that's right. I, I brought it back out there because I was making such a mess inside here with it. Uh, but I... I, was, I, 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 I've, I've been practicing working with a Dremel. You know, I mean, not only engraving, you know, letters and... But you know, edging, you know, things like that, and it, it's one of the reasons why I have this out here. You've, you've it's, definitely, it's, you've definitely got to check out Andy Hill's uh, YouTube page then, because he's doing yeah. some nice work. Well, I'm sure. Why do I want to watch somebody who's better than me? Um, because... <laughs> Inspiration, Chris. Inspiration. <laughs> okay. Well, Andy, all right, I'll watch you. Um, but I mean, seriously, it's why I have this sitting in right there. It's because I was checking because I was doing a lot of trying to. You know how you do the edging on like the corner of a board to make it look like it was has been carved, so, you know? So you got these little indents and it goes all the way around the board. Scallops. Yeah, to make it. Yeah. Well, thank you for the word. Um, to make it look like it's rustic or whatever. So I was practicing doing that with the Dremel, and then I was used the knife, and I was just trying to figure out which way was quicker and made made less of it. But like I said, I I was making such a freaking mess inside here. I. I ended up taking it back out there, but I mean, I, that's the answer I have because I, mean, I, you know, I haven't played with a Dremel and I can't tell you how long, I mean, a long time. And trust me, I still stink at it. <laughs> Not any good, but if you don't practice, you never get good. So that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to practice with that. So anyway, that's what I've been doing. What about do you, you guys? Do you do it like free handy with a, yeah. well, like no, a pen I, I, sort of? I will, you know, I will trace out the area that I want to carve and I make sure that, that looks good. Then I will take the Dremel to it, to try and, you know, basically f color in the lines that, like when you were a kid. I'll try to, you know, follow the lines and, and I've, I've, some of the stuff has turned out okay, but, you know, it's, it's not going to be a video anytime soon. Let's put it that way because it's, you know, not all of it is all that good. Uh, I could put out a video, I guess, but it would be like an hour-long video on how not to do things, um, <laughs> as opposed to something that actually turned out well. Um, but yeah, I, Richard, I've just been practicing, trying to do different things with that tool because I can sit here at this at my at my table here, and I can do that, you know. So that's something I probably ordinarily wouldn't have done. I don't know. All right. Well, I mean, what about you guys? What have you? Well, have you or have you already I answered this? I've been doing some uh, uh, compound cuts on the scroll saw. Um, I've been doing it. I've been trying to figure out how to do it on um, like acrylics and polyester, you know, from GPS. So, I mean, it's uh, it's it's a bit difficult, but I mean, sometimes it melts back together. But it slowly but surely been kind of getting there. So. Yeah, with the with the plastic melting back together again, do you um, do you slow the blade down the actual speed of the oscillations? Yeah, yeah, because if it goes too fast, it's obviously the friction is melting it back together. So yeah, if you gonna... put if you put packing tape or cellar tape, whatever you want to call it, at the top, then it the the, the, the packing tape actually acts as a lubricant. You can put uh -huh. wax, uh, like either soap or a candlestick wax on the blade as well, which will obviously uh, bring it down into the uh, thing, but that's only going to last so long. So I guess you could hold the candlestick there at the same time, um, but that's just going to 
be a hindrance in the long run, especially when you for a compound cut, you usually got to have about inch and a quarter stock to do anything remotely visible at the end uh, at the end result. Which obviously then that limit limits the yeah the space you've got so, for yeah exactly. Stuff. So, so it's usually okay. good to put a couple of strips of packing tape, even when using it on just wood, because that, like I say, acts as a lubricant. Well, you know what? At least you're trying it. I mean, it's like me with the Dremel. I mean, and until you practice enough, um, and I went off on this the other day, and I don't know if you guys want to get into this. We've got, I guess we've got some time left. We could discuss it. We have one more question. Um, but I went off on this about, because, I mean, and I did it on Facebook, because I, mean, I don't like to disturb groups that I'm in. But I really dislike the word talent. Um, it's only because it has been applied to people like me when I was in radio, and it was applied to people that were, you know, the musicians. And it's like, and it, I, it, 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 it's not talent. I mean, people kind of say that word and dismiss it as if it's something that people were born with. And it's not. It dismisses the fact that they probably spent years to be viewed as talented do you follow me? Yeah, it's like, I and I, I, I just don't like it. I would, I much prefer the word skilled. Um, and you have to become skilled before you can become viewed as talented. You know, it's like I, I just, it, I, I don't like that word because it just, it, and on, it's not because it's a bad word. It's just because people use it incorrectly and it assumes things that are not true. I mean, like, there's yeah, no such thing as an overnight success. There just there isn't. That also is a is a dismissive term. Oh, look, they're an overnight success. Yeah, but what about the six years of work they put into becoming what you call an overnight success? I mean, for crying out loud. It's, I mean, anyway, because I just I mean, it's practice, Jamie. Is what I'm trying to say. Is it, so you're not wasting your time. Oh yeah, it's it's been taken. It's uh, the the first few tries like. There was no way, but I mean, it's getting right. there. It's, uh, I've, I've recently found out that there's a specific top kind of blade that you can use as well on uh, acrylics, which will help as well. So you learn to go as slow as possible. So, yeah. And progress just continues to roll on. <laughs> as as you've got to go even yeah. slower on the scroll saw. <laughs> slower <laughs> than the normal blade, exactly. <laughs> anyway, what were you going to say? Slower normal. Um, uh, it was it was to do with the the kind of the the, the use of the word that is kind of drifting in its meaning. There's a few words that I've got similar feelings um, about, kind of gripes about. Yeah, yeah. but that, that we kind of moved on from that. To be honest, all right. Well, you know, and, and that's fine. I tell you what, another thing I've learned whilst during this lockdown is Zoom. Genuinely, yeah. I'd never heard of yeah. Zoom before this lockdown. Google yeah, Hangouts, right. yeah. Check Skype, check right. Um, Duck Duck Stream, which is what we use. Check yeah. Zoom. What the hell's that? P apparently, everyone uses Zoom. I've, I've actually been on a hangout using Zoom once so far. I've been on two, and it was my wife setting it up for her family because my wife uses it for work, so she knows how to work it. And so she sets it up with my family, my you know, my married family, my mother and father in law, sister, brother in law, you know, blah blah blah. She sets it up so they can all get together on Tuesday nights from California to Connecticut. Um, and I had never been on it either, Richard. And I, if you told me to start a Zoom conference right now, I'd probably still go. And I, I don't know how to do that. I've just clicked into one. I, you know, I wouldn't have a clue. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess I'll it's the same. the same as a, a presumably it's a, a, no different to Hangouts or any of the other kind of Skypey type. Yeah, thing. I'm, just I'm sure Zoom. it's not that hard. Everyone talks about Zoom now. I'm sure it's not hard to figure out, but people keep pointing out that's a Chinese thing. You know, frankly, does it work? I don't care. What they, kind of freaking uh, national? What kind of freaking national secrets are you going to pass along during a Zoom conference with your family? I mean, <laughs> this, this, this is kind of interesting actually, because Damo's saying that um, down under Zoom has been approved for education. So I wonder actually if it's not one of those kind of. Um, Box Teacher ticking reps. exercises. That's yeah. If 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 it's approved by schools in a country, chances are it's going to be in multiple countries, and chances right. are then that that's why it comes to the because like I've never heard of it before this, but presumably Skype doesn't do right. I don't know a Zoom thing or whatnot. 
some teacher somewhere doesn't didn't, didn't download Google Hangouts. So. All right. Well, we've got one more question left from Chris Murray, and we better get to it because this could this one it could be a very short one. It could go on a little while. I don't know. And then after that, we've got to let you know Mr. Page sing. Um, no, no. Uh, well, yeah. Hey, well, you know, I've like, gone out my way to find something so I can. Well, I, I, hey, I respect Jamie, so I give him his time. Um, what's a <laughs> this is a fantastic question, Chris? Um, what's a good gift to get or slash make for a woman who is having a birthday during this stay at home thing? And then he ended it with asking for a friend. <laughs> it was like, well, Chris, I think your wife. No, never mind. Uh, yeah, I. Anyway, I'll let Jamie and Richie go first because I'm not sure I have an immediate answer to that. What's a good gift for somebody who's a maker to give to a woman during this? All I can say to that is, don't ask Joe Whitaker. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I saw that video. <laughs> <laughs> you will end up on the, the toilet roll. You will end up on the wrong end of the stick if you go ask him. It's just not, not a good call. <laughs> That's the only recommendation I got. What, what about what about make her a ring box and then fill it with a ring? If you have a ring on hand, then yeah, that would be good. Oh, Emma says, uh, "Not as it's my birthday next week." Not oh, what? Well, good luck, Emma. Do, do any of you guys have any ideas on what you could tell Chris? Because apparently he was serious about the question. I mean, being funny about it, but I mean, he was honestly wondering what our answer would be. I mean, cats. I mean, my my birthday's the end of March, and cats is in June. And we basically both said this year our our birthdays are going to be kaput because you know, we can't can't go out and do. And I was like, yes. Um, I'm, not a big, I'm, I'm not a big birthday sort of guy anyway um My, mine's in less than two weeks i know it is jamie because we celebrated it at maker central two years ago yeah um, jimmy dress has stole my birthday cake I've yeah, still yes he did him. <laughs> you're still bitter about it <laughs> oh i would be too because he's he's a greedy it bastard. was a nice cake yeah, he's a greedy bastard that guy I'm how do you me. know it was stolen Anyway, um, go ahead. Richard. So yeah, so, so basically, um, we we decided we we weren't going to do like a presenty gifty kind of thing. So we we went halves on Disney Plus. Genius, because whilst we sat at home, I mean, we both like Disney anyway, which not everyone likes. That I think is money well spent. Um, you, you might not, um, but something like that that you could all share, and it's sort of a little bit different to like. A bowl gouge or no, that makes sense. To, you know, the, the well, kind yeah, of traditional sorts of stuff. I don't yeah. think I don't um, I honestly don't think Kat would fully appreciate a ball gouge. Yeah. Um I, I mean I mean she would probably go, Oh, that's a nice Richard. More of an eye gouge sort of yeah, a person. She, but if you're trying to win points, I don't know if you quite got there. Um uh, yeah. Chris Dragon Tail turning says shh with the ring things. I think he seems <laughs> to forget I think he seems to forget that I'm in the business of spending all of his money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which Jamie is one hundred percent guilty of. Um, but yeah, hey, whatever. <laughs> new, new lathe, maybe like a yeah, maybe well, a new lathe for your well, wife well, or your your significant well, other that's female. You're gonna buy well, a, the, a lathe. They, they turn they turn up at Kempton Park, and uh, Susie went home with a brand new lathe. <laughs> Well, I know, but I mean, that's like presenting a woman a Christmas gift that is in the form of a vacuum cleaner. There's just something not right about that. It's like, uh, you really, really are digging your own hole. It's like you would have been better off not buying anything than doing that. Um, yeah. You know, I don't have a clue. I, I, I honestly, I'm thinking, but my wife is so darn hard to buy for to begin with. I don't know if I could. Um, well, she's gotten into knitting, so I could get on a lathe and make her one of those knitting balls, or knitting that, needles, or or yeah, or needles. I mean, I so I could maybe do that. Uh, but I mean, if you know, obviously, if the woman you're asking questions about doesn't knit, then that's not going to help a bit. Um, I, I don't, know, Richard. Do you have anything that would help Chris? Because so far we've been useless. At, uh, 
only because you don't like Disney. Um, I thought I'd be very. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I like Disney. I don't. I, I love. I don't mind Disney. It's just I'm not the fan of going to Disney World that you are. It's, you know. um, where's it gone? And Andy Pugh um, came up with a, a, a good one. Um, pornography kit. Yeah, that's not a bad it, idea because it's, it's a sort of standalone. Yeah. Standalone job or and, and incorporate it with the turning. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, Peter Charles one's good and it's expensive. Genius. I'm just, I'm, Emma, I'm just trying, I'm, let I'm, me know what you want for your birthday. Message me and I'll tell Chris and we will pretend that nothing happened and that he just came up with this brilliant idea. And you go, why didn't we think of that before? Everyone's a winner. I'm, well, I'm I'm just thinking about my wife because before she got into knitting, she was not into making anything. So it's like I'm trying to feel for the boys out there that have a woman that just don't give two craps. And so a biography said given to somebody who was just not in that mode, probably not going to help. Um, anyway, I guess, Chris, uh, at least for me, you're on your own, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> at, at, at the risk of sounding slightly unhelpful. Yeah. <laughs> um, a bottle of her favorite wine. You know, if you can order that online. Anyway, Jamie, let's get to you and your and your vocal cords. But let, again, not that not that I'm trying to delay Jamie singing. But funny story. Rubbish. Talking about talking about bottles of bubbly. Cat and I went away for. Do you remember we went away like like a Valentine's weekend back in February? Mm -hmm. um, bought two bottles of bubbly while for whilst we were away. Forgot about it. We drank one. Forgot about it completely. It was in the back of my van for basically since the beginning of February. She, <laughs> Cat didn't even know we were in there. I went out into the van today because I, I was looking for I think a dust sheet or something, and um, pulled this bit of flooring to one side it's like sweet <laughs> bottle of bubbly in the back of that's only been in there like three months hey <laughs> let's go throw it in the fridge <laughs> I literally walked to the, walked to the cat's kitchen and went you know we went away the other week the other month yeah Doink. <laughs> so, bonus <laughs> nice that's, that's well that goes to the back of the fridge what have you found in your shop well richard's <laughs> shop is the back of his van he found <laughs> A yeah. bottle of bubbly. Well, technically, <laughs> it is really. Yeah, I guess you could argue that actually. I thought of that. <laughs> All right, Jamie. Um, yeah. uh, just you know, give me a chance. Just give me a chance. You ready? Yeah. Go. Jamie's page. Thank you. Right. Oh, Do you want me to do the stickers again? Because Rich has already done it and taken my thunder once. <laughs> Right, I'll forget the stickers because that's already been mentioned. So this one comes at a little bit of a delay, <laughs> right? It doesn't deserve it. Um, but uh, it's uh, Richard hit actually hit 20,000 subscribers not so long ago. Oh, did you? So, really, Richard? Uh, well done to Richard. It's about 19,999 people. Too much. But, I mean, that's cool. So, yeah. <laughs> well, well done to uh, Richard. I'm kidding, um, my man. I'm kidding. You know that. My uh, my know. shout out uh, this week goes to Nick the Flaming Turner. Um, as uh, a lot of people in the the UK know, and probably some of the uh, people across the pond may well know the support that uh, this country gives to the NHS. Yeah. Uh, well, Nick did a uh, a bowl called the NHS Bowl. Um, basically, it's a rainbow uh, colored bowl. Um, it turned out absolutely awesome. So props to you, Nick. Um, check out the Flaming Turner. He's only got about 300 subscribers, which honestly he needs more than that. Are you kidding me? That's it. Yeah. Um, the man, so the man should have more than Richard. What the heck? All right. Yeah, I, 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 agree, I agree with that. that. So check out Nick the Flaming Turner. <laughs> no offense to Richard. I mean, seriously, brother, I love you, but oh my God, there's only 300. Really? Yeah. Well, wow. Okay. Uh, Sorry. I mean, sixteen, as far as I can see, he puts out regular videos, regular lives. So yeah, check him out. All right, Richard, are you are you through searching to uh, come up with a last I'm minute still... answer, or, or, or are you still looking? <laughs> it's, it, it's just one of those because I. Uh, well, just, if you don't have one, you don't have one. Just move on. You don't. I mean, it's not required here, dude. I always, I always like to put a bit of thought into it, but literally, I'm looking through my history. And all <laughs> I know got, you are. All, I, all my history is all about 
um, custom tool storage stands, tool storage cabinet, because I've been getting like ideas for specific things. I must have watched like 50 how to make a tool cabinet videos in various snippets and guises and all the rest of it. So, yeah, go go search for tool cabinets and get some really cool ideas or just something you want. Here's my shout out is to go to YouTube and search for something that you want to do and just get that list of all those videos and just snip it through them because there'll be a little gem in there that you can take into your own project. Uh, yeah. be, out, of, out, of the six, out of the six you may watch, you'll come up with the project you want to make. All right, yeah, that's cool. All right, well, my my shout-out is, is going to be obvious, um, especially to the maker community. My shout-out is going to the Redsmith this week. Yeah. Did you guys see the video he put together with all the – the yep. makers around the world, you know, about, you know, entertaining, trying yeah. to entertain people within 15 seconds and saying, stay home, stay hey, stay safe and, and, and keep that making. That may well I have mean, been my shout out had you have not said, I'm putting this in quick because nope. you want to use it to nick it. Well, uh, yeah, I, ha I had to tell these guys mm -hmm. on, what was that, Thursday <laughs> night when that came out. So before one of you brickheads steals it, this is my shout out. Yeah, you, you got there before <laughs> me. <laughs> I was like, uh, but well, I mean, I mean, I thank him for including me, but that's not why um, I'm mentioning this. It was just so cool to see so many awesome people together in the video, you know, giving the same message, but while doing their own thing. I mean, uh, inspiration, my man, and and all the money that that's being raised to that is going to go to, uh, I guess, go to go to people that are going to be helping out with this this um, COVID nineteen thing. So. Uh, I mean, really, really well done, Red Smith. I mean, seriously, my man, um, you've got my love for for because I know that wasn't easy to put together because you had a lot of people that said, I think I, I think he even mentioned that everybody he asked to do it immediately said yes, which says yeah. a lot. Which says a lot. Had, of, I think he had about eighty people in which, the video, something like that. Which says that's a lot a about lot this of editing. That yeah, that's a lot of editing. So that's I mean, I even offered to help him out, and he goes, "No, I got it." Um, in other words, what he was saying is, "Chris, no, I don't want you screwing this up. I'll take care of it." Um, but I mean, <laughs> there was a, there was a everybody it, for him to say that everybody who he, he asked participated. Is is why I love the community we're in. Um, anyway, so I mean, I don't I didn't want to let that go unnoticed. If you haven't seen it. Then go to the Red Smith, the channel, you know, and then look for it. And I'm sure you'll, you'll find it if you look on his videos. And it's just very cool if you haven't seen it yet. But I, I haven't looked to see how many views it has. But if, if you haven't seen it, then you're probably living under a rock. Then you ought to get out from under there and do it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's my stuff. Richard, are we done? Uh, I think we are. Are we doing our free, we're not on Patreon after party that we don't do, but some people do and then not charge for, but we don't know because it's always different every week. Thing. <laughs> we can. I've got an evening free. So if you want to, Jamie, well, let me wait. Before we end, Jamie, do you have a premiere tonight at 7? Yes, or as, at I the top do. Of, Jamie yeah. has a premiere at the top in, of the hour. In 25 so, minutes. Yeah. So, Oh, so we have to make it quick then. So go, go show Jamie some love, all right? Because, yeah, I mean... I'll, I'll post a link in the uh, in the chat. There you go. All right. Well, no, uh, Richard, I can hang, but we need to wrap this one up because we're already over. And trust me, I have enough editing to go. do myself on these things. If YouTube lets I, you. I, I had a funny <laughs> feeling this would run over just because of the, the nature of the, the conversation and the topic but I will thank everyone for listening if indeed you are still listening if you're not then we'll say what we like about you until next week when we'll talk about something equally as baffling as we did tonight but we never know what it is until the night you all take care have a great week everybody <laughs> take it easy everyone